you met him yesterday uh, and <laughs> we've got a really a lot of really cool response uh, about uh, about uh, about what he did uh, whether it was the rose he did at the beginning of the day and after uh, all the memes that he published on the Slack. So please continue to do, <laughs> to do that, Thomas. It was amazing. And please welcome Mr. Thomas Wiesel. And clap. Thank you. Thank you, Steph. Thank you. Uh, so yeah, this is day two. I hope you all had fun yesterday. A lot of stuff happened. I didn't see everything. I hopped in and out of the live feed. I took some breaks because sometimes I thought my head was going to explode. I've been understimulated for many months now and all this info crept up on my lazy brain uh, there, there were some very very inspiring moments yesterday and that's not what I'm going to talk about obviously because that's not my job there is one lesson I did learn yesterday it's even for expert in the innovation field handling slides during an online lecture is very difficult we had Soya who didn't launch his slides until about uh, 10 minutes uh, during his speech. And then he tried to pull off the whole teacher thing. I was trying to see if you were paying attention and everything. That did not work out. And then we had Kai from Google, whose computer wouldn't let her share her screen because Google has not purchased Zoom yet. So they want you to use Hangouts. So they're sabotaging Zoom on their computers. But thank God Steph was there to save the day. But thanks to them, I went to sleep last night and I still had next slide, please, ringing in my head. There's probably a dance remix that we can do to next slide, please. And as a matter of fact, I did. And this next is the dance slide. remix. I did learn something yesterday. Slide. Dance break. Next slide. Um, Steph, next slide, please. Step next slide, please. Um, step next slide, please. Next slide, please. So this is probably the hit of the summer. Thank you to uh, DJ Steph Cruchon and MC Kai Haley. So I'm not going to use any slides today. I do have a few images. I'll be posting them in the Slack as I go along, so you'll be able to see them on the screen. And if you want to look in more detail, well, you know how you use Slack better than I do because I downloaded it yesterday. I'm a comedian, remember? All right, so this is day two. We're pumped. I feel like this is summer camp. We know each other a little bit better now. I've seen your faces on Zoom. I've seen you in the Slack, some more than others. You have all types of different characters. Uh, there's Sabrina, teacher's pet. She's always in the Slack saying she's excited. She has a question for every speaker. I think it's really to show her beautiful wooden house and her balcony. I think it's mostly that. There's Mikael. Yesterday, he tried to dance. I have the image of that. Instead of dancing himself, he just uh, put a, a giant, um, is it a duck plush toy in front of his camera? So yesterday, we were looking for the serial killer of the group. I think we have found it. It's Mikael. Uh, Martin has been drawing everybody, and I need to register two complaints with the drawing that he did for me um, that I'm sharing in the Slack right now. First of all, uh, my glasses are perfectly straight. It's just my face that's crooked. And also, never in my life have I been able to do the splits. If I'm ever in the position that Martin has drawn me in, there's something terribly wrong with me and I need an ambulance. So please call one. There's Egle. Egle, I feel like she's been living in my computer for the past few days because every time I click on the page on the i2day website, her face pops up. Hello, I'm Egle. Can I help you with anything? Yeah. Please stop popping up. It scares the hell out of me. Please get out of my computer. And of course, there's Steph. Steph looks like he hasn't slept for about five days. Uh, he needs to either start shaving or stop shaving. But there's something really wrong with his mustache right now. I don't know. There's, you just can't have just the middle part. That's, that's a universal human rule, Steph. The three only people I know that have the same mustache as Steph has right now is, uh, of course, Hitler. Charlie Chaplin and Robert Mugabe. And the best guy out of those three impregnated two 16 year olds. So it's not a great company when you have to say, yes, there are two murderous dictators, but also the other one is a funny pedophile. So not a great look with the mustache stuff. And it's not mean, it's just you need to do something to your mustache. I have a suggestion. I have a suggestion to fix your mustache, and I'm showing it in the Slack right now. So yeah, now we have Hitler and Mugabe in the Slack. I thought that was a fun and light way to start the day two. 
so yesterday we had Katie Swindler. She explained uh, a lot of things. The fact that the one I remember is the one that uh, with the CPR mannequins, the fact that the mannequins in training had no boobs made guys hesitate when it came to give cardiac massages to women. Well, I did not have that problem because my CPR mannequin growing up was a very different kind of mannequin than the ones you saw yesterday. I, I did all my training on the, on that mannequin. So I'm not, I'm not very good at CPR. I'm terrible at kissing, but I also I'm not scared of boobs. So I guess it evens out. We had Paul Watson, of course, yesterday, the legend Paul Watson, a little bit of a mix between Komodo Custo and Che Guevara. I really love this look. He's kind of like a, a hipster grandpa. And he is a hipster because he was an eco-warrior before it was cool. He was fighting for the environment when Greta Thunberg's parents were in diapers. He was 11-year-old destroying beaver traps in Canada. When I was 11 years old, the only place I was finding anything was on a Nintendo 64. Paul Watson founded Greenpeace and then he left because they were too passive, he told us. So Greenpeace, the dudes who climb nuclear reactors, they crash corporate earnings conferences. He was like, nah, too boring. Let's go to Antarctica. And his life story is fascinating. So yesterday he told us Sea Shepherd once chased an illegal fishing boat for 110 days until the guy sank his own ship. What I don't get is how come they've made a live action Cats movie, but they've not made a movie about this story. I want to see that. And there's another incident that I really liked. I saw in an article online and I quote, Sea Shepherd says fishermen threw lead weights, dead fish, and even Tabasco sauce at them. Tabasco sauce. So the guys, they thought that was going to scare Sea Shepherd away. Do you see the size of the Tabasco bottles? What damage can that do? I can only imagine the guy from the fishing boat throwing it. Maybe they're allergic. And one thing I learned reading about Paul Watson yesterday is that whales are crucial for the ecosystem of the ocean because the ocean needs whale poop to replenish nutrients and iron. I don't know what. So we need more whale poop. And here's where the Tabasco sauce comes in handy because Tabasco sauce will make your bowels work. So just catch the Tabasco sauce from the fishermen, sprinkle it in the ocean, and poof, there's way enough whale poop for everybody. And then we had Soria, we talked, about it. we talked about it a little bit. He told us he used to work at Microsoft. Now he runs a lot of design swarms. And I'm pretty sure he's under a secret contract with Post-it now. Because seriously, he does a few design swarms. And soon, Post-it will be part of the gaffers. It's going to be the gaffers. So many Post-its involved. Soria told us it, uh, it was easier for him to have workshops during COVID than it was during the rest of the time. He even said that COVID brings on design 4.0. To me, the experience was a bit different. COVID brought uh, being broke as shit 5.0. That's what it brought to me. But so, yeah, he seemed to be positive. He told, uh, he told us it was easier for him to connect to someone 6,000 miles away than someone six feet away. Dude, you need to change your glasses. I think there's something wrong with the correction. That's not normal at all. He said one thing that stuck with me. He said to get a good idea, you need many ideas. And that's why today I'm doing many jokes, because then maybe at the end of the day, I'll have one good one. That's the objective. Then we had Kay. Kay uh, talked about the future of teams. And her team of two people with Steph on this talk is not the future of teams at all. Dance break. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. Sit down. No more dance breaks. But Steph and Kai, to me, were a perfect example of a team. They got off to a rocky start. And then after a few minutes, it was working perfectly. And I think that's sprint. That's probably not sprint, because I still don't understand what sprint is. We'll get back to that. Kai said they realized during uh, COVID that uh, eight-hour video sessions were not possible. And I think we realized that yesterday because you had almost five hours of video and it was really intense. Well, at least two of those hours of video were drone footage of the Coton Vaux, which I thought was a bit cruel to all you guys uh, internationally because uh, we're showing you beautiful panoramic views of Switzerland. And especially to Americans, who are like, oh, look at all this beautiful stuff that you're not going to be able to come and see before at least 2022 because you're, you're on the no entry list now. But you should be reassured, the drone footage you're seeing and the beautiful images of Coton you're seeing, that's the tourist office of Coton sharing it. That's not our daily lives here in the Coton That's more what our daily lives look like in the bottom here. That's reality for us. We don't live the life in that little uh, promotional clip. Uh, then we, last night we had, uh, we had Jake Knapp. Uh, in his talk, I learned how to make scrambled eggs and also that when you're two minutes short in the speech that you have to give, just put two dense breaks. So I stole that idea today and that's design sprint. Still not design sprint probably because before yesterday I had no idea what sprint design was. I figured that when people who look more like me 
than Usain Bolt talk about sprint. It's probably about design and not the 100 meter dash, but I did not know what it was. So I went on Wikipedia, I typed design sprint. And what struck me at first on the Wikipedia page for sprint design is that the picture to illustrate the article is of Steph, Egle, and Paul. So that's two options to how that happened. Either they're really important in the world of sprint design, or they're the ones that wrote the Wikipedia article. So congratulations, guys. It's a very well-written article. Then by, by curiosity, because I was a bit jealous to see Steph and Egle and Paul in that article, I went to the uh, stand-up uh, comedy Wikipedia article. And as you'll see, uh, the picture that illustrates the stand-up comedy article is not of me, but of George Carlin. So that was a bit humiliating for me. So I decided to edit that article straight away to change the picture. So I changed the picture of the Wikipedia article for stand-up comedy. And now it's a picture of Steph Cruchon doing his hilarious hello joke. So by the time I'm done, every article of Wikipedia will have a photo of Steph illustrating it. That is my contribution to the world. I did read the article about sprint design. Well, I skim read it because a lot of things were happening. And from what I understood, uh, design sprint is going from a problem to a high fidelity prototype in a week. And I thought that was pretty impressive because I wouldn't be able to do that. I'm a master procrastinator. My specialty is going from a problem to a highly urgent problem in a week. And I call that standstill design. But I'm planning to diversify. I'm pretty sure I can go from a high fidelity prototype back to a problem in about 30 minutes. And that's reverse super sprint design. So day one was a lot of new info. And to me, it felt like being in college again. And I think, I think that's what day two is going to feel like, at least to me, because we have Yves Pignor speaking. And he was one of my college professors, which he might not remember because I was in the back of the class and I didn't speak much. I was not the Sabrina of the classroom. But I have good memories from that class because I got a good grade. At least I think I got a good grade. Maybe Eve will contradict me. But anyway, I became a comedian. So it's not like I've really used my business degree anyway. Of course, since then, Pina and Osterwaldo have sold millions of books, but I think I have an idea of how they started selling so many books because I bought the first book because I had to for the class. And that's genius. They made it mandatory for every student in the class to buy their book. And Pina teaches in the biggest faculty in Lausanne. So every year, it's thousands of new students buying his book. And I think they should write a book about that because that's a great idea. I haven't read the new one uh, yet, uh, Invincible Company. Uh, because nobody forced me to buy it, so I didn't buy it. But I think it's a good name, Invincible Company. It's good marketing. It reminds me of the Unsinkable Ship. I wonder how that one turned out. And we have a lot of the other speakers, including Marc Gruber from EPFL, which they had to invite because EPFL are sponsors. And he's the only guy for whom putting the conference online didn't change anything because he was supposed to speak at EPFL, and instead he's speaking in his office at EPFL. But I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to day two, all the other speakers. And I'm looking forward to hearing a sentence that I heard yesterday that I never thought I was going to hear in my life. You can unmute yourselves to clap. So I hope you're going to unmute yourselves and clap for me. Have a good day. Have a good rest of the conference. <laughs> and, um... uh, sorry, Mark. I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't... <laughs> So that guy is, uh, is just totally out of control. Thank you so much, uh, <laughs> Thomas. <laughs> that was amazing, man. <laughs> Thomas Wiesel. <Woo. laughs> All right. Um, so we're going to take a short break. Um, and we are back at 30 past with the next talk. Professor Mark Gruber from EPFL University is going to tell everything about uh, the uh, about exploring new mar new markets. You will see it's amazing. I've seen the slide. It's amazing. See you soon in seven minutes on the live. <laughs>